Thank you so much. Thank you all. But I'm conflicted tonight. And I'm deeply conflicted because I know that I stand here purely as a vessel for a cause that we've been fighting for way too long. And that is the disparity between those who have and those who do not have. The disparity between the global north and the global south. The disparity between those who colonized and those who were colonized. The disparity between men and women and all others. The disparity between those who, through no fault of their own, are differently able or incapable of doing all that they would like to do. And I say so because after 77 years, you would think that the world would not be prepared to walk the path that it did 100 years ago because we know better and we've lost many who otherwise could have been here. But there's a culture of contentment, to use the words of Galbraith regrettably, that has come with those who have felt material prosperity without thought of those who cannot sleep easy at night. And it is ours to continue to remind all that peace and prosperity are within the reach, yes, of all eight billion people, but it is how we choose to distribute what we have, and it is how we choose to give opportunity to others. I'm amazed that in spite of the clear existential crisis that climate presents, that we've not been able to move the needle quicker and faster, deeper, and for more. I'm amazed that people are still prepared to pay fast and loose with lives, but also with opportunity and access. When COVID-19 hit, and millions of children across the world were denied access to education, one would have thought that the market capitalization of tech companies would have allowed that problem to be resolved in a fair and equitable way, including with access to electricity, which regrettably hundreds of millions still don't have, particularly in Africa. I would have thought that the scenes that we have seen in the Pacific and the Caribbean that have literally taken people away from their homes would have been sufficient. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps the summer heat wave in Europe, perhaps the apocalyptic floods in Pakistan, perhaps even the wildfires in California and the groundwater crises elsewhere in the north may begin that process. It is inconceivable that people are hungry tonight while oil companies score on their profits billions of dollars, not annually, but quarterly. We have to have the conversation of our lives. Someone on this platform tonight said it is our last best chance. It truly is. And we don't want it to be that, but it truly is. Because there are people, as you saw tonight when Mia cried on this platform after her wonderful rendition of the song Roots, or as you heard tonight as Natalia spoke about what they're trying to do with the excellent work of UNFPA, or as you saw with Forrest Whitaker with his wonderful commitment to want to bring peace and development without having to wait for others and without having the access to the billions of dollars that large pharmaceutical companies or large tech companies or large oil and gas companies have. Conscience is what is the first step, but political will is what will make the difference. We know it, we've said it, we discuss it, but yet we wait for it to happen. In our own small country, we don't believe we can solve the problems of the world. But when I see the people 
in different communities in my country not have access to water and to know deep down it's not just about the leaking pipes that are a century old, although that is critical and that's why the SDG agenda matters. But it is fundamentally also about the groundwater crisis. It is about the ability for us to have enough to give them. And when I see others worry about the fact that we cannot resolve people being the victim of antimicrobial resistance, dying from simple infections because we've not spent the money to do the research to bring new antibiotics to the market because it's a one course pharmaceutical as opposed to those that are given to people for life. For life. I wonder, I wonder whether we truly want the planet and people to survive. I hope, therefore, that in accepting this award tonight, that I give volume to the battles that have to be fought, not for me personally and not even for my country alone, but because without a peaceful planet and without the opportunity for persons to be able to live the best life they can and to have the chance to live in human dignity, we are we are letting down the side who met to say we the peoples. We have it within us to make that change. But we must first summon the will to talk with each other. And the absence of conversation with each other is perhaps the greatest crime that we have foisted on ourselves in the third decade of the 21st century. There is too much talking at and too much talking too. And you know, in preparing for tonight, I could talk to you about the Bridgetown agenda, which is important to us because that is going to bring back, we believe, the opportunity from countries to be taken from the brink of a debt crisis if we can provide the emergency liquidity that they now need through no fault of their own, but as a result of the poly crisis that the world faces. Or I could talk to you about the need to be able to turn the billions that are being lent by the multilateral development banks into trillions. And why? Because we need to have global public goods protected and a common public space for all. Or I could talk to you about the fact that even if you give some countries money, they can't borrow it because they have no fiscal space to spend it, no balance sheet to spend it, largely because they've already been paying the price of what it is to save their populations from the climate difficulties of the last few decades. These are the realities. But I choose tonight simply to ask us to, like a baby, to creep before we walk. Let us get back to the table and talk with one another. War exists because we refuse to talk with each other. War exists because we refuse to find common purpose with each other. War exists because we do not value the life of another human being that we simply cannot create again. And if this United Nations is to stand for something, then first and foremost, it must stand for ensuring that we don't only talk or talk at, but we talk with. And I hope and pray that the United Nations Secretary General and his brilliant deputy who is here with us, who herself is a woman of serious action, that if we can't get countries to recognize that now is the time to talk with each other, then we have betrayed the legacy of those who came out of the great wars and the great tribulations of the early 20th century and who said that they were prepared to make sure that there would be no repetition of the suffering that people went through then. We have not finished the journey, and we have now to summon the will first to creep before we walk. Let us talk with each other, and let us make that defining difference that the world needs more, more, more than ever. The war must stop, not just in Europe, but in Africa, in Asia, in the Middle East, 
all over where it raises its head. And that is why tonight I choose to end with the songs of a young Barbadian woman who many of you may not know, but who many years ago wrote a song called Togetherness. Her name is Alison Hines, and she is a brilliant Barbadian artist. But she said, with purpose and with rhythm, that the fussing and the fighting and the war must done. The fussing and the fighting and the war must done. And let we come together as one. If that is possible, it will only happen when one plus one plus one plus one as countries and one plus one plus one plus one as human beings are prepared to do it. I don't expect that there will be a romantic ending. But I do expect that we will try because in trying, we shall save lives. And in trying, we shall be able to pass the baton to those who will get us closer to that victory. May God bless each and every one of you. And may God bless those who sacrifice and whose purpose brought them tonight to equally be recipients of this awards. And may I say to the United Nations Foundation, to all of you who are associated with it, continue the excellent work. Because in spite of what many may think, you continue to be a beacon for what should be and must be in this world. God bless us all. Thank you.
at the back of the room, tea, coffee, and more desserts than is good for us. But we are celebrating global leadership and resolve. The 2022 We the People's Dinner. Thank you for being part of it. Thank you. Passer!